One of the most common compositional challenges in landscape photography is effective control over the edges of your photograph. And by edges, what I'm referring to is the outer boundary, the frame, the window, whatever it is you'd like to call it. It is the means through which, as a photographer, you either choose to include part of your landscape or purposely exclude part of it. And it's that relationship between what's excluded versus what's included, which can sometimes get a little bit messy, especially if you're shooting wide angle or you're shooting a large scene, because sometimes there's just little fiddly things like maybe it's a rock or a shrub or a piece of sky or like just something kind of weird like down in the foreground. And so one of the most common ways to fix this is to fix it in the field when you are out composing a photograph. I talked about this in one of my uh, videos from a couple of months ago when I was out doing some landscape photos in Utah where I brought up the, the topic of edge patrol, which is something you've probably heard before. It's basically a practice that you get into where before you press the shutter, you just look around the edges of your frame and you look for anything weird that is either sticking in or sticking out, or maybe it just, you know, feels like it's just a little bit off in some way. And the most common way to fix it is to either zoom in you know, so that you are excluding whatever it is that's bothering you or whatever it is that's kind of rubbing up against the edges, or you zoom back out so that you are including more of it in your frame and you are giving it sufficient affordance between itself and the edge of the photograph so that it appears to be there with intent. All right, so let's jump into Photoshop and look at some photos. Now, I just want to point out that these photos were shot in Death Valley National Park uh, during a recent trip there, and they are 100% original, straight out of camera. I've done no processing on these at all because I wanted them to be in their most raw, natural state for the purposes of this video. I have hundreds of photos that I still have to go through in order to uh, figure out which ones I like the most. But the images I'm going to show you here are uh, perfect illustrations of the point I want to make in this video about controlling the edges of your frame. Because, as you'll see in this very first photo, up here in the top left hand corner, there is this weird little place where, you know, just a little bit of sky is peeking through. And, you know, at first I totally just did not notice it, notice it at all. And then down here in the lower left hand corner, we also have kind of a weird spot. There's this weird little bit of flat foreground that's down here uh, in the, uh, you know, towards the viewer, towards uh, where I was positioned with this strong, you know, dark kind of diagonal line that's cutting up here in the lower left. So what I ended up doing was I did what I was talking about before by performing edge patrol and I noticed these problems. And so for the next photo, I zoomed in tighter and in doing so, I got rid of the problem with the sky up here in the top left. I got rid of that little awkward corner down here at the, at the lower left. But the problem is, is that that nice little hill that I had right here is pretty much gone. You know, you can, you can see it here in this one. I really like how it kind of balances the bottom of the photo. But in the second one where I fixed the photo, it now is truncated and it's now just completely gone. And the other thing you notice, and I kind of have to zoom out so you can see it, is the fact that, you know, by, by uh, you know, performing edge patrol and by zooming in and getting rid of these things, everything in the photo then becomes enlarged and it gets closer and closer to the frame of the photo where, you know, I preferred the wider focal length of this particular image here as opposed to this one. So really the only problem with this very first photo um, is the sky in the top left and the ground in the lower left. Otherwise, I'm totally happy with the photo. One of the most common ways to address this and the way that you know I think most people would immediately go would be to you know, come over here, grab the lasso tool, um, you know, select the sky. You could also do this with a luminosity mask or something like that. But just this is just a rough edit. Just quickly select it with the lasso, uh, edit, content aware fill, and we're going to let Photoshop kind of, you know, work its magic and figure out what it should put in here. So 
you know, you can kind of help it out by coming here and saying, yeah, I don't want you to sample that rock or, or this little bit of ridge right here, whatever it is. I mean, you could do this for hours. And unfortunately, it's not always perfect. I mean, as you can see by looking at this up here in the preview, you end up with kind of like these weird, almost like psychedelic looking images where you get these, uh, you know, these, these areas that are filled. I mean, the sky's definitely gone now, but it's been replaced with this really smudgy, kind of bleary, blurry, smeary, almost said bleary, um, just weird kind of area where Photoshop is just trying to basically invent something out of nothing and is filling it in just with what it thinks looks right. But unfortunately, it just doesn't look right at all. So content aware fill is not always the way to go. Sometimes it's okay for like, you know, like a small image for Instagram or something like that. But if you're, you know, putting something on a website or printing it, something like that, you definitely don't want to go this way. Now, another uh, method that uh, predates content aware fill is to use something like a clone stamp tool where, you know, you just, you know, collect, you select the tool, select the area that you want it to copy, and then just come in here and uh, clone away and just, you know, paint in pixels uh, using other areas, nearby image, nearby areas of the image for context. And the problem with this, and yes, I am being just a little bit sloppy with this, but again, you get the idea. I mean, you can see what's going on here. The top left hand, you know, corner, you know, where the sky was is now weird again. You have these repeating patterns. It, it again looks kind of blurry and pixelated and just not natural at all. But there is a better way to do this. So let me show you how to do that. So we're going to roll back to the uh, original image here. And this third technique that I'm going to show you now uh, requires you to double click on the background layer to unlock it so that it's an editable layer. Come up here to edit and then go to free transform, which is command or control T depending on if you're uh, Mac or Windows. So free transform. And then you come up here to the option bar and you'll see this little square button up here that says switch between free transform and warp modes. This is where the magic happens with this uh, tool. So what you do is you click on this, then you come over here to this grid drop down, and there's different options in here for three by three, four by four, five by five. And let me just zoom out so you can see what this does. So if you select three by three, it divides up your photo into nine individual photos. It's kind of like one of those old nine slice things if you used to do animation like I did uh, back in the day. So you have uh, a three by three grid, nine individual sections. If you bump this up to four by four, then you end up with you know even more editable areas. The point here is that you are isolating specific areas of the photo so that you can transform just those areas without affecting anything else in your photo. Because like I said, I'm perfectly happy with the rest of the photo. It's just that one little area. That's the problem. So with this enabled and with the grid on, I'm going to zoom back in again, come up here to the top left, grab this little handle up here in the top left hand corner and then just drag it up and to the left. And if you do it, you know, proportionally, you know, like up and to the left diagonally out from the corner, then you're uh, scaling this and transforming it, you know, both horizontally and vertically, uh, you know, in an even way, as opposed to going straight up like this or out like this. This is one of those things where, I mean, let me just zoom out a little bit and you just kind of have to finesse it a little bit. You can grab this handle over here and kind of pull this up. Um, grab this one over here, pull it out a little bit, whatever it is you need to do. It just, you know, takes a little bit of work and eventually you'll get it to a good spot. Now, one thing I do notice is that this hill right here is getting a little bit weird up here in this uh, top left hand corner. Let me just zoom in so you can see it better. You know, I'm cutting off the top of that. So that's getting a little bit strange. So I could do something like that 
leave it there, and then use the lasso tool or the clone stamp and just clone out this tiny little piece, you know, piece of sky right here. That would work, uh, you know, perfectly well. Or I could go all the way and just, you know, pull this all the way up and get rid of it entirely. And the cool thing is, is that, you know, then you have, you know, the sky is no longer a problem. And it, you know, to my eyes, at least, at least, it looks perfectly natural because you've just kind of scaled and stretched one little part of the landscape and you're using real pixels. Like it's almost like you just reached out into the scene when you're photographing it, pinched the top of the hill and just kind of pulled it up a little bit um, as part of your photograph. And in landscapes, you know, which is just inherently full of chaos and texture and, you know, all these different things where there's no, oftentimes, you know, not a very clear, um, you know, no clear geometry to anything. Stretching things and pulling things like this doesn't, doesn't look uh, particularly noticeable because, you know, things don't look bent, in other words, because there are no right angles anywhere. So doesn't work for every photo, but in situations like this, it totally works. So let me come down here and let's go back to this lower left-hand corner like I was talking about before. Uh, I'm gonna turn transform back on, grid, four by four. Then I'm going to grab the handle here, pull this down until it's gone. And I think that'll about do it. So I'm going to hit return and that will lock in my changes. And as you can see, I mean, look at this. I mean, it just, it looks so natural. I mean, there's no blurring. There's no interpolation of like, you know, Photoshop just making stuff up. It, it looks as, as intended and it looks good. And it looks now similar to this photo except now I have this nicer, wider uh, field of view here than I did in this photo. So what methodology do you typically use? Do you have a different way of fixing edge issues like these that you like to use? Something I didn't cover in this video today. By all means, please leave a comment and uh, describe your technique in the comments section below. If you would like to see more photo processing tutorials like these in the future using both uh, Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop, please give this uh, video a thumbs up. I'm planning on making more of these in the future if they're helpful and if uh, people who subscribe to this channel and follow it enjoy them and, and get some value out of them. I would be uh, happy to create more and to make uh, a playlist of them. I have ideas for future videos too. So um, if it's a positive thing, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't done so already, please also subscribe. It really does make a difference in the growth of the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, so that is it. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next time.